Good morning everyone. My name is Ritesh and today we'll discuss current affairs issues. Now, today's topic is China's border law, right? So, today we'll discuss uh, so many things about China's border law that this new law has come into place, right? And it will uh, came in, come into effect from 1st January 2022. Uh, so, in this video, we'll discuss uh, what this China, uh, China border law looks like or what the what are the provisions that are being mentioned in this law then we'll discuss the key points available in this uh, basic law of china which uh, guarantees some of the rights that are being delivered to some of the authorities of chinese government right so how they will manage the border areas and the security management of those areas how they'll uh, how they'll engage with the civilians of the chinese population right so we'll discuss these things uh, uh, in a little detail with some key provisions attached to it right so um, and then after key points we'll discuss the concerns related with this law like uh, if uh, if this law has been into effect uh, in china uh, what are the impacts of this law uh, on some neighboring countries right because india is also such a country which is uh, uh, India is also an neighboring country of China, right? So, uh, we'll discuss these things too, that what are the implications, what are the concerns of these laws uh, to the neighboring countries? What are the effects of these uh, laws on these neighboring countries, right? Then we'll discuss at last the China's border disputes, how many countries China share borders with and all those factual things we'll discuss in the last slide, right? So, let us start with the China border law. So, uh, uh, recently, uh, first we will discuss why this was in news, right? So, this China border law was in news because it came into effect from 1st January 2022. Chinese government enacted this law and this will came into effect from 1st January 2022, right? Now, uh, it comes at a time when border standoff in eastern Ladakh remain unresolved and several places in Arunachal Pradesh have been named recently by China as part of its claim on the Indian state. See, the main idea of Chinese border law, of China border law is to gather uh, some of the areas that are attached to these border, bordering areas, right? Like uh, if you consider India and China, there are so many uh, disputes with related to border areas uh, in between China and India. And even right now, there are so many uh, places of eastern borders that have been in disputes between China and India. And in the meanwhile, they are adopting such kind of law in their uh, own country. And uh, what will happen? It will impact India because uh, these laws will be favorable to Chinese government and not to India, right? So it will eventually hamper Indian government and Indian laws, right? Now let us discuss the key points related to uh, Chinese border law, right? So we'll look at the provisions of Chinese border law. So, first one is management and defense of border areas, right? So, uh, as per this law, as per Chinese border law, the People's Liberation Army and Chinese People's Armed Police Force, these two other authorities of Chinese government, are assigned with the responsibility of maintaining security along the border, right? So, these two authorities, People's Liberation Army and Chinese People's Armed Forces, right? So, these two are the authorities that are assigned with the responsibility of maintaining security along the land, around the bordering areas, right, as per this act. Next is this responsibility includes cooperating with local authorities. So, they will do that, uh, they will secure the border areas, not only by, just by, by themselves, but also cooperate with local authorities too. Uh, uh, see, local, uh, the main role of local authorities here is to actually inform these authorities about what uh, what are the areas of issues concerned related to the these bordering areas, right? So, in the mean, in the in this act too, they are focusing on local authorities that uh, they should inform these higher authorities to all these things, right? Next is the this law, this Chinese border law prohibits any party from indulging in any activity in the border area which would endanger national security or affect China's friendly relations with neighboring countries. Right. So, as per this law, uh, it actually prohibits uh, anyone from indulging in any activity in those bordering areas which will 
uh, endanger the national security of China. So, because these, uh, because this law has been enacted from January 2022, 1st January 2022. So, the main idea is to secure the bordering areas of China, right? And through why? Uh, how they will do? They will do that from the Chinese authorities, right? And they will also prohibit any such act which will endanger the security of China or even the uh, 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 or, or anything which affect the China's friendly relation with their neighboring country like India, right? I'm just giving an example of India because India is also a neighboring country of China, right? So that is it. Now next is even citizens under this act, even citizens and local organizations are also mandated to protect and defend the borders infrastructure, right? So not just these authorities uh, of Chinese government, but also the citizens and local organizations are also empowered under this act to defend these border infrastructure or to protect these bordering infrastructure, right? Then finally, the law provides for border to be sealed in the event of war, right? And there are also so many uh, uh, even, uh, events when uh, this law uh, uh, allows the border to be sealed, right? For example, uh, just uh, refer to the slide, right? Uh, this law provides for the border to be sealed in the event of war, armed conflict, incidents which threaten the security of border residents, such as biological and chemical accidents, natural disaster and public health incident. So these are the actually areas or these are actually the events as per this act in which they will allow the border to be sealed. Right. Then on the topic of its border sharing countries, the law lays down that the relation with these countries is to be based on principles of equity and mutual benefit. Right. So this law is based on the principle of equity and mutual benefit. Right. So, uh, so basically uh, through, from the, through, uh, through this law, the, uh, India, uh, sorry, uh, through this law, China actually want to be, uh, uh, China wants uh, globally uh, all these countries to recognize Chinese law, right? Because and uh, they want to do that uh, by saying that they are basing this law on the principle of equality and mutual benefit. And mutual benefit here refers like if you are getting profit, you are also getting again you, the, these things are very mutual. So mutual benefit will be there in the bordering areas too, as per this law, right? Then this law provides for provisions for formation of joint committees. Now, now this joint committees is as per both civil and military with the state countries to negotiate land. So if there is a dispute regarding the land border management or border related issues, then this law provides for uh, uh, formation of joint committee, both civil and military, and they will actually negotiate the land border management and also resolve the border related issues, right? Now let us discuss the concern over this law, right? We have discussed the key provisions of this act, right? Now we'll discuss the concerns that are related with this act. Now, first concern is the border, broader aim of the land border law is to give legal cover and formalize the Chinese military's transgressions across the line of actual control in 2020, right? So through this law, they will actually formalize the Chinese military armies or the civil population in those border areas and that will eventually affect Indian population too, right? So because they are enacting such kind of law in which bordering areas are concerned, now what they will do? They will do, uh, they will actually enhance the military, uh, uh, military armies over these areas. They will try to settle those citizens populations of Chinese government, right? So through this, they will aim to give legal cover and formalize the basic Chinese army over these areas, right? For example, the line of actual control, right? Next, the law calls for increased settlement of civilian population and improved infrastructure along the border area, right? So the next one is that this law allows for increased settlement of the civilian population. Now this law allows the civilian population to be to settle at those bordering areas and why they are doing so because they want to formalize all these things they want them to settle over these areas so that they can acquire these areas 
with time right and because they have a legal backing so they can do so right next is uh, this that china actually has previously used this strategy of moving its civil population along the contested part of the line of actual control on the basis of which it claims rightful ownership right even now there are so many areas bordering areas or there are so many areas uh, alongside the line of actual control that are being uh, that are being disputed right but china says that it ha they have the uh, rightful ownership over these areas and how they have done these things they have done these things through settlement of these populations over these areas right so again uh, through this act they will do uh, the same thing in the eastern bordering areas right so these are the basically concerns of this law right so now let us discuss the china's border disputes of uh, 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 under this act right uh, not just under this act we will discuss this factual thing so that you will attempt questions related to this aspect so let us discuss the china's border disputes right so uh, again i am saying this slide is very factual and this is basically the exam oriented uh, point of view right so you'll expect you can expect some direct questions over there right so let us discuss this china's border disputes so china has basically 22100 km land border with 14 countries all over right so again the point is 22100 km land border right and how many countries there are 14 countries over there now china has actually resolved the boundary disputes with 12 countries now out of the 14 countries uh, 12 con uh, they uh, china actually has settled all the res and resolved the boundary dispute with the 12 neighboring countries now two countries are re uh, the rest so which are the two countries india and bhutan are these two countries with which china is yet to finalize the border agreements right next china and bhutan signed an mou memorandum of understanding forming up a three uh, step road map for expediting the boundary negotiations right so as per uh, china they have actually under uh, signed an mou with bhutan and they have set a road map of how they will resolve the bordering disputes over there right and uh, as per india india china border disputes cover 3488 km along the line of actual control and china bhutan dispute covers about 400 km right so these are again these these are just the factual informations uh, with related to china's border disputes right and that's all about uh, this topic again if i uh, i'll say that uh, the main areas of concern the main areas with related to your examination point of view is that you have to uh, remember the key provisions of this law and uh, when this came into effect and all and what are the authorities that are under this act that are being concerned and all and just uh, take a quick look at the map of india and china and how they are being disputed over these areas right so thank you so much that's all for this video